Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another RMA Flyer tutorial and today I will be teaching you how you can break cloth into pieces like this uh, inside of Houdini. So I'm going to be giving you guys this setup right here and I am also going to be showing you how I did it because this opens the door to a lot of really cool things. First things first, let's check out whatever geometry you import. So whatever you, geometry you import, uh, a good thing to do first before you go through any of the process is just remeshing it. And the reason why it's be, we're gonna remesh it is because we want this triangular shapes to create the, the base for what we're gonna cut, edge fracture. So on the edge fracture, you can utilize the edge fracture without um, the secondary input or with the secondary input like I am doing. And the reason why I'm doing it is because I wanna use these planes to randomize the way the pieces, the edges are being cut here. Um, why is this important? Um, because variation, variation is the key for this kind of effect. And this right here is gonna give us a lot of variation in terms of like highly detailed areas and very low detailed areas. And also like you can move this around and control like whether you want a lot of detail in this area or the director just wants a little bit of detail here. So wherever we move this thing around, um, you will get that effect. And this is very simple. This is just a grid with a copy stamp and I pasted the copy relative reference and pasted it here just so that whenever I move here, um, it increases it down here as well. So the subdivisions on my grid, I are tied equally. Then I am copy stamping it six times. I'm randomly rotating it. And then here I control where I wanna place it. So where you wanna place it. And then a little bit of mountain movement to it, and then fracturing the geometry based on these shapes. Um, and you will see that areas like this are going to be way more detailed. Um, and that's what we're looking for. We want to have uh, high detailed areas with low detailed areas uh, to create, see that, like really, really randomized uh, pieces. Now, the second thing is we want our collision geometry in here. So for the collision geometry, I am doing VDB from polygons, and then I am doing a VDB reshape. And the VDB reshape, I changed it to erode. Literally, that's all I did. And then I converted this to polygons. Why? Because I wanted it to be eroded a little bit inwards. If we were to sketch this out, the what I am doing is that the actual geometry is a little bit uh, thicker or fatter or however you want to say it. So the inside is this part here that we have, which is our collider. And then the outside area is the part where we are cutting into pieces. So that way they are not um, intersecting and we don't get any weird stuff happening. So that's that. Then you want to drop down a, a vellum cloth Oh, the last thing that I forgot to tell you about the edge factor is like if you drop down the edge factor and you connect your geometry I'll just cancel that off the bat when you connect your geometry and your thing where you were going to use this to fracture off the bat, I'll show you what you get. That's what you get. So you're gonna be like, hey, what the hell? Why do I have color ones? It's because here I am doing output primitive piece, and then you can click this on and off to show you. And then that way you actually have those things as individual prim uh, primitives. 
So the next thing is you're gonna drop down a vellum cloth and then you're gonna drop down a vellum silver and connect them. And then in the middle, you wanna drop down a vellum weld. And the vellum weld, it's going to literally weld uh, the pieces together like that. But in order to enable it, you need to select it. You wanna come all the way to the bottom and enable the threshold for breaking. Now on the threshold for breaking, you have bend, stretch, bend angle, like you can play around with these ones and then really bring it down low. I put it to 0 0.001 and that dictates uh, the, the um, stretch intensity that it needs to break. So if you wanted it to like, like right now mine breaks pretty quickly, but if you didn't want it to break so quickly, you can like tell it, oh, okay. So what happens if we do 0 0.01 on breaking threshold? And what I am doing here is I am adding a pop force with a wind intensity of three, amplitude and serial scale. Um, and I am coming to my simulation forces and setting this to zero. That's it. That's it. That's the only thing that I'm doing. So now you will see that with the same intensity force, just reducing the threshold, like increasing the threshold, it's not gonna break as fast. Some things it won't even break, or some things you'll get really interesting tears. See, so in this case, like if we wanted it to break, we're gonna probably have to either wait longer on the simulation or crank up the forces here. So let's see what happens if we add way more force. Will that or will that not break it? Let's have a look. Let's increase it even more, let's say like 30, see what happens. And there you go. You, you can see that it's gonna start to tear it. And I found when you do like stronger breaking thresholds with stronger forces, you really do get some really interesting shapes. You can see that. Alright guys, this was a very quick tip, uh, I hope you liked it and I'll be back with more.